Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Sunday, August 25th. We're right around 7 a.m. here at the command post. You can hear all the voices in the background as we get ready for another big day. Uh, this is kind of our, not just our break it down, but it's also kind of our Sunday morning, uh, uh, let's just call it a prayer. We're really worried. We got an urgent message for homeowners. We know a lot of folks who went back to their properties this week, and that's just very untypical of our normal way we do business because things are really unsafe in there. Uh, our, our PIOs have worked up a two-page flyer that's going to go around the community today. Uh, it's basically our worries and concerns for those ash pits that are out there. We've had our fourth firefighter step into an ash pit and get a, a minor burn on their leg. We've got those fire weekend trees that just continue to come down day and night. Remember, we're fighting fire in there day and night. We've got our containment up to 28%, but we're dealing with those hazards all the time, and we call those trees silent killers. Those are the ones that you can be working away, engage, and all of a sudden you get a near miss and you're like, oh my God, and your whole stomach falls out of your body because you know if that was two feet over and it hits your head, you're gonna go down. You might go down with just a minor nick or a real clobber, what we call it. And that's what kills firefighters out there. And that's gonna face homeowners. It's already been facing them and it's been causing them all kinds of problems too. We've got the, <clears throat> the power line down utility line issue. The main the line is energized, the side taps are getting energized, the hidden hills are getting energized today. But at the same time, on your particular parcel, there's all sorts of different wires. I still have wires from the sockeye fire on mine that are one side that's kind of weird and I gotta get fixed. <coughs> Equipment and crews working around you, that's really worrying us. We have our mission to do. We've got our ops chief and our division supervisors and task force leaders having our firefighters very focused on doing the mop up and containing the edge so we can increase the containment. And then we're getting calls from homeowners who have assumed the risk of being home, who shouldn't really be in there. It's an unsafe environment and then they're calling us in to help them out. If that happens over and over and over again like it has, it changes our operational rhythm. It gets in the way of us getting more containment going and it's just not how we normally do business. We understand that you're in there. We understand we still have a level three, but when those calls keep coming in and they have been coming in, they really become a concern for us. That's part of our urgent message for homeowners. Please understand you have assumed serious risk being in there. It's an unsafe environment. Even after re-entry, let's say re-entry is in a couple days, it's going to be unsafe for weeks. Why? We have this. We have this unbelievably dry fuel condition. That's impacting everything. This is not normal. This is not like our, we do this professionally. We do it hundreds of days in a year. Some of us were out there all over the country fighting fire and doing re-entries. But this doesn't happen very often. This drought, the persistent dry, that means that there's going to be ongoing unsafe conditions even after re-entry. I can't stress that enough. That's really kind of what this whole group is worried about. Even after re-entry, we can't do what we normally do, which is make your yard safe, which is mop up everything in it, cut up the trees, get them into a safe area, and then get you home. That's not what's happening. It's not what's going to happen, and it's got everybody here really worried that this message might not get out to folks. We don't want you getting hurt in there. We know people are home. We know people are going to go home as soon as we say that they can. All those law-abiding folks, and folks who've been giving us a lot of respect by staying out of the way and letting our firefighters put more containment on there. But when you do get home, no matter when that is, it's going to be unsafe. Until we have a season ending event, until many, many more weeks goes by, <clears throat> we also have this whole thing about hazardous material smoldering. So in certain sections of this fire, there's going to be parts of houses and insulation and all sorts of stuff that are still smoldering away. That could impact the elderly, the pregnant, anybody really. Right? Who wants to be around smoldering hazmat? Nobody does. But when you're back home, taking care of your getting ready for winter, and we get that. You're Alaskans, you're can do. There's no all respect there, but still, it's dangerous and it could really impact you. It could an ash pit could burn you, and again, your car could get hit by a tree, and you can't blame us for that. That's like this is this we're, we're not just kidding around here. This is the real Sunday morning kind of call to action. Please pass it around the neighborhood. All you amplifiers out there who are the top fans, who are out there talking, sharing, putting it on your feed, putting it all over the place. This is the real concern. You could pull into your driveway during re-entry sometime early this week, and very soon after that, have a tree come and crush your car. That's the real fact. You could be out there in your yard moving to go see if that wellhead's still good, and you could step in an ash pit and have it come right up to your leg and give you a second and third degree burn. And in fact, you could be in that ash pit for a minute trying to get out thinking like, Kale told me this could happen, but now it's really happening and I'm scared because you can feel that heat in there. 
that's the real talk we got going on. We'll be handing these out. We do have our fire information hotline on there, 907-313-9826. That's for you to call us. We'll give you this story all over again because it's not going to change. This is going to become the new normal. Is that it's an unsafe environment. We know that you're already home or going to be going home soon. And we can get re-entry underway in a you know, we're reevaluating re every day <laughs> and that there's going to be these ongoing concerns. Mark Staples is running the camera again. <laughs> and uh, Mark, what do we got from the audience? Uh, just one question that came in. Is there a website where we can find this map? Okay, yes. So this map uh, is on NCWeb. We have an incident, uh, NCWeb number for this fire right now. So you, you go to ncweb.nwcg.ncweb.gov. Go up to Alaska, you'll see McKinley fire. We also do post it on the feed like uh, yesterday when um, in one of the comments I tried to put a zoom in of this up. And then in our akfireinfo.com post, we always put up a map like this. Uh, sometimes it's zoomed farther out and looks more like the evacuation one, Mark, as you pan over. Sometimes you'll see these colors. That's still the fire map, but that's showing you that level three, level two, and level one. Should we talk about the road real quick? My feeling is that the uh, state troopers are going to be putting out a notice this morning here pretty soon that says that the road is going to be going to two lanes. What that means is it's still going to be slow traffic moving through, flaggers and all that, but construction crews that are coming up and people who have been putting off their travels north, it sounds like there's going to be some really good news today. Uh, we always want you to be ahead of the curve, all you who are watching the live feed. We want you to be prepared for what's ahead, so we'll try to, as much as we can, always give you the information so you can plan ahead. And I would expect that here in the next hour or so, we'll have a, a clear understanding if there's going to be a Nixle sent out. And then sometime, if all goes well uh, for the motorists, look around midday or today or tomorrow, somewhere in there, for the road to go to two lanes. When that happens, please slow down. That's one of our real concerns again. Remember, we've got the equipment and crews working nearby. So if there's two lanes in the parks, and we're pulling off all the different driveways. We really need you to not be passing. Observe the 45 mile an hour speed limit. Pay attention to the flaggers. When we do go from one lane to two, it's up to you to keep our firefighters safe. We're gonna head down to the briefing area. We've got our other work to do. We'll come back here later in the day. Community meeting, 10 o'clock in Talkeetna. And again, this urgent message for homeowners is because we're worried and we care and we want you to be in our inner circle and part of the Green Pants Nation. Thanks for all the support out there.